Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. Today we're going to take a hard look at the analog sticks for the AYN Odin. These sticks were one of the main complaints that I had about the device when I first reviewed it. A lot of people like to refer to them as the Nintendo Switch sticks, but they're actually about 10 to 20% smaller than those. And so in this video, we're going to kind of run the gamut of all the different options you have when it comes to replacing or improving the sticks on this device. And a lot of this information I got from people in the community and just kind of compiled it all together. In the end, I found a solution that does work better for me. And that's what you're seeing here. These are Nintendo Switch sticks that have had the caps removed, and then I've added replacement PS Vita caps instead. And so it's kind of a roundabout way to find a good solution here. But as you'll see later in the video, we don't have a lot to work with by virtue of the size of the casing around the analog sticks themselves. And bear in mind that this isn't the only solution that will be available in the future. For example, the brand Goalie Kit, which makes hall sensing joysticks, has now got into the Switch game. As you can see here, they have a new Switch style analog stick that should be coming sometime in the future. But for now, this is the best that we have to work with. Now, if you don't really mind the analog sticks on the Odin, then this may not be the video for you, because it is going to require you to take the device apart and then also replace the analog sticks altogether. It's not a difficult process by any stretch, but all the same, you're not going to get a lot of juice for quite a bit of squeeze. Either way, this video is going to be a doozy. There's going to be more failures than successes. And so, at the very least, I hope you find it entertaining. Anyway, without any further delay, let's jump into it. Now, first thing I want to try is to make any sort of changes without actually modding the device itself. We're going to start with these grip caps from a company called Skull & Co. And I've used these before on my RG350s if you watch some of my really old videos. And they actually come in multiple colors. I have the black ones from years ago, but they also now have the, these blue ones and light green ones. So it's really going to be up to you. We'll try these colored ones first, just because they stand out quite a bit. And there are three pairs of grips here, and they're all of varying heights. So I decided to try the highest ones possible to see how that would work out. And as you can see here, they add quite a bit of reach here. And that height to me feels a lot better. It feels more like a modern console controller. But I can already tell that the rubber on these is pushing against the sides of the analog stick case. And sure enough, if I boot up a game here, this is Halo Infinite running on Xbox Game Cloud. You can see that I can barely move. I'm pushing these sticks as far as I can, and it feels like Master Chief is just like swimming in a puddle. If you watch here, I'm going to take off the grips, and the controls are perfect again. Okay, so that's not going to work. Next, let's try out some PS Vita caps. I ordered these, I think, from eBay quite a while ago. And these caps are a little bit smaller than the ones found on the Nintendo Switch. And so you're not going to be able to just place these directly over the existing Odin sticks. And so when it comes down to it, there are no caps that you can really add to the Odin that are going to improve the experience without also removing the maneuverability. So you have two options when it comes to actually getting better gameplay. The first would be to use a Bluetooth controller when playing a game like this, but that kind of defeats the purpose of having a retro handheld in the first place, so we're not going to go that route. And so the other option here is to replace these sticks. And so here are actual replacement Nintendo Switch sticks. And as you can see, these are quite a bit bigger than they are on the original Odin. Like I said, 10 to 20% bigger too. Now, in addition to being wider, these are also a little bit taller and just a tiny bit stiffer too. And I think that's going to translate to much better gameplay. So let's get into the Odin itself and see what we can do in terms of swaps. Now surprisingly, getting into the Odin is not too hard. You're just going to need a small Phillips head screwdriver, and there's only four screws altogether. That being said, getting the case off is kind of a pain. You're going to want to use a guitar pick, and then open up the SD card slot here, and then you're going to want to wedge in that guitar pick, and then just kind of shift it to the left and right to basically leverage it to open up the case just slightly. The clips on here are not very big, but there are many of them, and they're in there pretty tight as well. I have found that they are very sturdy, and so there was no fear of breaking these clips as I was opening it up. And it does take a little bit more strength than you may be used to using when opening a device like this. And sometimes you might get lucky and be able to open the whole thing just from one side. But I found that most of the times that's not the case. Here's another time where I'm opening it up. And in this case, I had to go all the way around. Your major leverage points are going to be in between these shoulders and triggers here and then mostly the top and the bottom. Once you get each of those sides removed, then you can start working on the sides. Those are probably the hardest, but once it's done, it's done. And one of the nice things here, there's no wire connecting the back and front plates. Now, the very first thing I did once I had the Odin open is to remove this little A sticker here. As I mentioned in my Odin Purple review, I wasn't really a big fan of being able to see that sticker, but now we're good to go. After that, getting this stick out is pretty easy. It's just two screws. They are smaller than the case screws, so keep those separate. Then just release the analog stick ribbon cable, and you should be able to pop this stick out right here. 
And so yeah, as you can see, the Switch one is a little bit taller, and then of course it is quite a bit wider as well. But in all other regards, the placement of the screw holes, as well as the size of the analog stick ribbon cable, they're exactly the same. Now unfortunately, the little cap that's on the switch stick is too wide to be able to stick through the Odin's hole. And so you are going to have to pull it off, and depending on the replacement switch stick that you get, most of these are not going to be ones that you can take off and on. So when you pull this off, it's going to be like ripping it off, and it's okay, we have the other caps to replace it with. It'll take a couple minutes, just kind of coax it out. But luckily, once you have that cap off, you can actually just slide the new stick right in. The nice thing about doing all this too is that we're not damaging the original stick, so if we mess things up, we can always go back to the original form. So I'm just going to screw it in here, and as you can see, yeah, it fits through, and it looks pretty good. Now before I actually used PS Vita caps, I did have some Nintendo Switch replacing caps that I wanted to use instead. And these little caps are made exactly for this purpose. If you were to accidentally pull off the cap of your original Switch controller, you can just add one of these instead. And these are pretty easy to put on, you just kind of flip open the cap itself, and then what I do is I place it against one edge of it and then stretch it around the other. However, as soon as I added on this cap, I had that same restraint that I was feeling with those original caps that we tried before. I could could tell that the rubber was pushing against the side of the device. And if I add one of those other additional caps, it gets even worse. And so unfortunately, I don't think you can use Nintendo Switch caps in this device. The opening is just too small and it's going to inhibit your gameplay. And that, my friends, is where the PS Vita caps come instead. These ones are definitely smaller than the Switch ones, and for that reason, they are actually harder to get on too. In fact, it took several minutes of me testing and trying to finally get them to actually go on. But I'm here to say that it is possible. Just Make sure you do that trick that I mentioned, just flip it inverted a little bit, press it against one side, and then stretch it around the opposite side. This is something that's really hard to show on camera just because I need both hands to show this correctly, but here's one take of me doing it properly that very first time. I inverted the cap, pushed it against the left side here, and then stretched it along so that it covered the right. And there we go. The nice thing about these Vita caps too is they have a good amount of height on them. So they're going to stick out a little bit more than the Odin ones, but you have a full range of motion too. Here's a comparison against the other side, which still has the original Odin stick. As you can see, it sticks out just a little bit more than the D-pad. And so meanwhile, the Vita ones are going to stick out quite a bit more. So now that we found one that actually works pretty well, let's swap out the next stick. Same thing here, we're going to unscrew it, and then detach the ribbon cable, and then add the new one. Adding the new ribbon cable is a little bit tricky, just because it's such a small part, and you kind of just have to coax it in. And it's not going to go very far in. You may not think it's actually fully in, but it is probably seated. From there, just flip that switch down so it secures it into place. We're going to do the same with the next ribbon cable here. Another thing to note is there will be a little bit of slack in that cable, so it's not going to be nice and tight. But it's not the end of the world, the case is going to close up just fine, it's not going to get it in the way of anything. Okay, so once we've added those switch sticks and we've added the ribbon cables, let's go ahead and close this baby up. And putting it together is much easier than taking it apart. All you have to do is line them up and then just squeeze everything back together. And last thing we need to do here is to add that PS Vita cap to the top of this one too. I should mention there are many different designs of PS Vita caps from the pack that I'll have linked in the video description, but personally I like the one that's really bumpy, it just has a nice grippiness to it. Either way, it might take a little bit of practice, but once you got it going, this is what it's going to look like. It may feel a little bit uneven initially, but as you start using it, it's going to settle into place. And so here I am running Halo Infinite again, using the PS Vita caps with Nintendo Switch sticks, and it's running really well. Now, that being said, the difference between the original Odin sticks and this one is somewhat minuscule. I would say this feels about 10, maybe 20% better than it did before. And so I wouldn't really consider this to be a complete transformation of the device itself, but I do think it improves the overall gameplay when you're playing twin stick shooters like this, and it does minimize one of my pet peeves about this device altogether. Now, my other concern is that when they release the AYN Loki here later, they're going to use these same sticks, so we may end up having the same problem down the line. Either way, I think it's pretty cool that we do have a community-driven solution if this is something that bothers you. And of course, I'll have links to all this stuff in the video description below. I have one other thing I want to do with the Odin, and that's to improve the face buttons on the device. But I'm waiting for some materials to come in before I start on that one, so I'll make that a separate video. Either way, I hope you found this useful, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. As as always, thank you for watching, be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.